the hare and the tortoise. There once was a hare who lived in the woods. He was a very jolly hare, but he thought he was the best at everything. The hare kept boasting about how fast he could run, and he absolutely knew that there was no one who could run as fast as he could run. So one day, when he was walking in the woods, he shouted out loud. I challenge everyone to race with me, he said. I'm sure to win. There was also a tortoise who lived in the woods. He had heard what the hare had shouted and thought to himself, I can do this. I can race the hare. The tortoise agreed to race with him. What a joke, said the hare. You haven't won yet, replied the tortoise. The hare just laughed (laughs) as he knew he was going to win. The race began. The hare was so sure of winning that he lay down to have a nice restful sleep not too far away from the finishing line. The hare gave a big yawn and closed his eyes. The tortoise, meanwhile, plodded on and on, his big old shell heavy on his back. After a while, the hare woke up and the tortoise had almost reached the finishing line. The hare got up to run, but it was too late. He could not catch the tortoise. He was very angry. How could a tortoise win me in a race? He said. It's not possible. No one that heavy and slow could ever beat me. The tortoise just smiled at the hare and went on his way. And the moral of the story is slow and steady wins the race. Which means, even if it feels you are going slowly, keep on going and you will succeed. The Lion and the Mouse One day, a little mouse was running around the forest playing. She was having a lot of fun. But what she didn't realise is that she was running up and down the leg of a sleeping lion. The lion opened one big eye to see what had disturbed him from his dreams. And what he saw running up and down his leg was the tiny mouse. The lion thought to himself, Oh, a tasty snack. The lion lifted his huge paw and grabbed the little mouse whilst licking his lips. Please, Mr. Lion, please don't eat me. I was only playing. The lion looked down at the little mouse with his big, huge eyes. Well, I have had a big lunch today, and I am pretty full. I don't think I'll eat you today, little mouse. Today is your lucky day. The lion forgave the little mouse, and placed her back on the ground, and let her go. The little mouse was free. Thank you, Mr. Lion. I shall never forget your kindness. It's not true what they say about you fearsome lions. Squeaked the little mouse. Someday I may be able to help you too. The lion laughed and let the mouse go. A few days later, some hunters caught the lion and tied him to a tree. The little mouse saw what was going on and waited until the hunters left. She crept up to the lion and whispered, I told you one day I could help you. The little mouse 
soon bit through the ropes and set the lion free again. The lion was very grateful that the little mouse had come along and was so very glad he didn't eat her when he had the opportunity. He said, Thank you for setting me free. I have learnt a valuable lesson today. It is good to have a friend like you. The moral of the story. Be kind to everyone you meet, as you never know when you may need their help. the woodcutter and the angel. It was a cold and frosty day and a woodcutter was working happily beside a river. He was chopping a big old fallen tree trunk into firewood to take home for his family. He raised his axe to strike the wood when suddenly it slipped and dropped into the water and sank to the bottom of the river. He began to cry because now his family would be cold tonight with no wood to light the fire and keep them warm. An angel who had been sitting resting nearby heard him weeping and asked him what was the matter. When the angel heard the poor woodcutter's tale of how his only axe had slipped into the water, he knew he just had to help him get it back. The angel dived into the river and swam to the bottom and came back with a golden axe. This is not my axe, said the woodcutter. Mine is made of iron. The angel dived back into the water and brought up a second axe only this one was made of silver again the woodcutter refused the axe because he knew it was not his the angel dived back into the water once again only this time he came up with the iron axe the woodcutter was so grateful to the angel for bringing him his own axe The angel was so pleased with the woodcutter for telling the truth about the first two axes that he gave the woodcutter all three of the axes to keep for himself. The woodcutter went home and told all of his friends what had happened to his axe and how the angel had brought it back up from the bed of the river. The next day, one of the woodcutter's friends decided that he would like a new axe, a gold one. So he went to the river and threw in his axe, calling out to the angel for help. The angel dived into the water and brought up the golden axe. That is my axe, lied the woodcutter's friend. The angel had been sitting resting nearby and had seen the woodcutter's friend throw his axe and he knew that it was an axe made of iron. The angel was so angry at the woodcutter's friend for telling lies that he took away the golden axe and left the iron axe at the bottom of the river. The woodcutter's friend now didn't have an axe at all because he was being greedy and telling lies. The moral of the story is honesty is the best policy. Never tell lies because you will always be found out.